I've never played a Halo game. To clarify, I've actually played most of them, I just have never actually touched the story of any of them. My closest association with Halo has always first and foremost been its multiplayer. And some of the characteristics that it used to bring out in some of my friends. Get fucked! Anyways, now that I actually have a means to play the game, I'm pretty excited to experience what is easily one of the most influential franchises in the industry. You suck! After all, the first Halo was inducted into the 2017 World Video Game Hall of Fame, which is cool because- Because that's actually located right here, at this museum, here in Rochester, New York, which is where I live. Yeah. So I'm actually gonna split this ramble into two defining parts as my first impressions to Halo, and that is aesthetics and then gameplay. The one word that kept coming to mind when trying to describe what Halo looked like to me is safe. There's really nothing about Halo or even where the franchise has gone today that makes that game look like it's taking any big bold risks in how it looks. And again, I'm not demeaning the actual conceptual design of the things because I'm not saying that it isn't impressive. It's just the world for me doesn't really display anything artistically appealing to me. It's kind of an environment that I just wouldn't say is a jarring or offensive. You got some nice green earthly places and then you got some kind of industrial tech com uh, army posts in alien, you know, tech rooms. And I think even some of its bland environments kind of add to its broadness and its appeal. In so many ways, everything about the game all the way to how Master Chief looks and the fact that you don't see his face, though I think it's cool you don't see his face, I think all kind of plays good into the equation of why Halo is so broadly appealing. Further off of that, something that I think is kind of a weird funky contrast is its new agey world kind of like soundtrack, which I think is an extremely odd bedfellow to the pacing and combat of the game. And because of all that, I think the music of the first Halo is really weird. And in a weird way, because the soundtrack is weirdly not fitting, I can also see why maybe the soundtrack could be memorable to a fault, like, Remember that sweet fucking game where you shot dudes, but there was like that like singing chick in the background with the drums? I like that. It just, I don't know, it's, it's a weird combo, so yeah. And though when I was younger, that's kind of how I felt generally about the game, it's all those feelings stand very true now having played it. The contrast to my feelings is that now I've actually played it and now I actually get it. Now where I would use the word safe to describe its aesthetics and environment, the word that came to mind when describing its gameplay is buttery. It's very buttery. It's got like a lot of the smooth butter. It just feels good. Every single weapon in the game has its own weights and values that gives it pros and cons. All the way from how they shoot and how they handle it. And shooting a plasma pistol versus actually using an assault rifle has such a different feeling and reaction that just makes the game feel good. And kind of moving off the same feeling of weight and impact of its weapons are its enemies. Each kind of enemy has like a way that it moves and thinks and plays against you. For example, there's enemies that are clearly smarter and more fearless than others and how they attack you when other ones kind of, uh, those dumb little like squealy sounding dudes are often in packs and will run away when the big tougher dudes are taken down. And it's interesting to see now how games have adapted that from 2001, having not played Halo and kind of relating it to certain games I play now, being like, ah, like that's where this kind of spawned from. Like that's how that thing came to be. It's really interesting for me having, you know, not played it until now. Overall, I still don't feel as though Halo took many risks in presenting itself and trying things necessarily different, but in so many ways, it does the things it does so exceptionally well that that is the thing that made it so different. It's just aesthetically, and even in its story, there's really nothing new there that left me impressed 
17 some almost 20 years later after its release. So all that said, I still don't think I'm quite in love with the world of Halo and what it has to offer, but I have found a new appreciation for the console shooter that made console shooters what they are today. Okay, it is that time where I answer a question asked by somebody in the community. The Iron Coyote asks, what is your mindset now after making 100 videos? Anything changed goals for the next 100? To be completely honest, I didn't even notice that I had made 100 videos. I really haven't been keeping count. Anything changed? Uh, I mean, things have changed since day one, without a doubt, since the first video versus now and kind of my headspace and intentions and what it is and how it is I make my videos. But for the most part, all that matters is that I'm making videos. Goals for the next hundred, none whatsoever. It is to make as much stuff the best I can, the most efficiently I can, as much as I can. I don't know if I already said that. Goals for the next hundred is to make another hundred. That's, that's the goal. And then another hundred or how many ever it makes sense for me to make. And there you have it. Halo from a dude who hasn't played Halo, but has played Halo now. Really late, pretty late. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Kurt. Goodbye.